a family friend. <clears throat> but more than 25 years ago, she was a Christian lady. And she was, she found, unfortunately, in a wastebasket, a copy of the translation of the Quran. <clears throat> she opened it. She read it. And she said that after I read the Quran, I felt that the one who is addressing me knows me full well. I'm completely exposed. The one who is addressing me in this book knows me inside out and outside in. And she embraces that. She said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah because this cannot be from a source other than my own creator. It cannot be. This is the translation, not the the original Arabic text, but you know our <coughs> Quran is miraculous, not only in its wording, but also in the message that it contains. So, dear brothers and sisters, <coughs> many times you hear an ayah from the Quran, you say, Subhanallah, this is talking about me. So, really, if you want to know yourself, you read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because sometimes we forget our own nature. Because we try to hide, you see, these bad uh, characteristics that we have, we try to hide them. Now, some of these ads that talk about our nature and how we behave in different situations are amazing. It is in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that describe how humans behave in different situations, in, in, in time of difficulty and in time of prosperity and ease. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ ضُرٌ دَعَا رَبَّهُ مُنِيبًا إِلَيْهِ ثم إذا خوله نعمة منه نسي ما كان يدعو إليه نسي ما كان يدعو إليه من قبل وجعل الله أندادا ليضل عن سبيله قل تمتع بكفرك قليلا إنك من أصحاب النار warning before I translate that part of this ayah is not applicable to Muslims but certainly the portion that talk about the nature of our people's behavior in time of difficulty is very true to many people. Allah here is saying that when affliction befalls man, he immediately cries. He cries out to his Lord. He begs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He supplicates. Muniban ilayhi. Muniban ilayhi is a very heavy duty term that shows the dedication, the depth of dedication in worship, meaning it is turning, turning his whole being to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how he behaved in time of difficulty. There is another ayah that even details how bad he cries and how bad he supplicates to Allah. The other I mentioned, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ ضُرٌ دَعَانَ لِجَنْبِهِ أَوْ قَاعِدًا أَوْ قَائِمًا That when a, a, a calamity befalls a person, he, he calls upon us laying on his side or sitting or standing, meaning in every situation, he begs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, once that problem is removed, once that distress is taken away from by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses that man with a bounty by his grace, what does he do? Uh, he completely forgot about, uh, uh, he completely forgot all about the one he called upon before. He forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another ayah that even described a, a lower level to which a human descend in a time of bounty. 
You know, in the first situation, he enjoys the blessing of Allah, forgetting that he ever was in distress or in need or in difficulty. This ayah tells us that, uh, فَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ ضُرٌ دَعَانَا ثُمَّ إِذَا خَوَّلْنَاهُ نِعْمَةً مِنَّا uh, قَالَ إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ that whenever a calamity befalls man, he begs us, he <coughs> supplicates to us. But whenever, as soon as we bless him uh, by a bounty, with a bounty by our grace, he says that, إِنَّمَا أُغْتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي I indeed uh, has... Uh, uh, yeah, he has been blessed with this because of a knowledge that is in me. I deserve it. I have what it takes to have it. He completely disregard the source. He forget the source of that bounty. The source. He he referred the credit to himself, not to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. One more ayah that describes the nature of human being. And again, I want you to hear this ayat and reflect and think deeply about your own self and see how we as humans, you see, behave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ Indeed, indeed, uh, men, we're born with a restless disposition. They are always anxious, anxious, nervous. Whenever an evil touches them, they are very impatient. They won't, you see, they, they only think negatively. They want a solution right now. <coughs> they behave as if there is no exit for this distress at all. But whenever they are touched with a blessing from Allah, bounty, they selfishly withhold it from others. This is the nature of human being. But Allah said, He had made it an exception. Illa al Except those who observe prayer. If they, except those who are dedicated in their five daily <coughs> prayers. They pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who shows that this illness that is within human beings can only be purified with our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With uh, our prayer, with our supplication, you see every form of which worship is a purifier for your soul. Every form of worship is a cleansing for your own heart. And this was Allah tell us that all these deficiencies that are in humans can only be remedied by strong relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the challenge of uh, today. Dear brothers and sisters, now we see that how uh, humans behave in time of difficulty and in time of prosperity. In time of difficulty, they are impatient. And in time of prosperity, they uh, forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even they, they, they refer the credit of whatever good that they enjoy today is from themselves, has nothing to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, there is something that is very important, brothers and sisters, that we need to learn about. And that is something that we've got to face in the life of this world. And that is the issue of trial. Trial is inseparable from life. The trial is inevitable. And all what we have seen here from the scripture of Allah is talking about different types of prior, uh, trial. Because here in, in this, in this the last ayah, that, the ayah before the last I mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, after the person saying, no, this is because of a knowledge that is in me, Allah said, بَلْ هِيَ fitna." But he a fitna. Indeed, it is a fitna. It is a trial. But most of them don't know. Meaning that blessing, that bounty, that ease, that affluence, that status, that that uh, yani good thing in which we live, 
is a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, facing trials is inescapable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَنَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ We will surely try you. And in this ayah, specific ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ that by means of fear, danger, loss of fruits or souls. So this is a form of trial. This is the trial of hardship. This is the trial of, of uh, uh, calamity. And many people talk about this trial. But I am not going to talk about this trial. There is another form of trial that most of the time is neglected. The trial of, of, of evil is known to people, and people address it. But I'm going to talk about another type of trial that is the trial of wealth, the trial of ease, the trial of security, the trial of status, the trial of uh, enjoying good life. This is a trial. People don't pay attention uh, to it and believe you me this type of trial proved to be harder harder than the trial of calamities and hardship and we'll mention why but before what is the evidence for this the evidence is in one of the acts that I've mentioned and Allah clearly stated وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ we try you by means of good and evil, and to us alone you shall return. So trial is not only by evil. Trial can be by good, can be by easy situation, comfort in life, wealth that we enjoy, and 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 this is very relevant to our condition here in this city, in this land. And also, also Allah said, وَبَلَوْنَاهُمْ بِالْحَسَنَاتِ وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجُعُونَ To the same effect that we try them through good and bad things. So trial can be with evil, with hardship, and can be with, with good. Example, you see, uh, wealth that you have, the family that you have, the status you have, your wives, all of these are different types of trials. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ fitna." Know that your wives and your, that your wealth and your children are a fitna. They are fitna, they are trials. How they can become trial, how one can fail this trial, it is when one neglects one of his duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his wealth or because of his children or because of his wife. And and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله. Oh, you believe? Do not allow your uh, your wealth and your children to divert you, to distract you from the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, الولد مبخلة مجبدة مجبنة مجهلة محزنة. That your child could be a cause for miserliness or cowardliness or ignorance or uh, grief you know uh, this is a warning from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not to allow our children or fear for them or concern for them that is baseless to uh, drive us to neglect our financial obligation. Otherwise, they, in this case, become a cause for stinginess. Or our, you see, 
uh, a duty that requires courage, like speaking the truth no matter what. So, uh, the, if we allow them to 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 uh, to stop us from saying what's right, this is they have become here a cause for cowardliness. Same thing about ignorance, and same thing about about grief. So, meaning, be careful. Don't allow. Enjoy your life. Be whatever you can be. You know. Is important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here does not want us to neglect life and word and just dedicate, find a top of a mountain and dedicate ourselves for the worship of Allah. You cannot practice Islam in its ideal form except when you intermingle with people and deal with people. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, الذي يخالط الناس ويصبر على أذاهم أفضل من الذي لا يخالط الناس ولا يصبر على أذاهم. The one who deals with people, intermingles with people, interact with people, and is patient for whatever harms that harm that come from them is better than one, than, one, than the one who does not. So, in, in many ayat, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told us, like like when He, he talked about people who are dedicating their work, uh, themselves. And attending the masjid all the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها بالغدو والآصال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله. He praised these people who come to the masjid and not be distracted, not allow their businesses and their uh, daily transactions to divert them from the <coughs> remembrance, remembrance of Allah. So here Allah is endorsing having businesses, endorsing having uh, daily transactions. But what is what is now uh, uh, the the uh, criterion? The cri- criterion that protects the person is for for none of these worldly uh, gains and distraction to take him away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dear brothers and sisters, these are examples. Wealth, children, wife, status in society. All these are examples for the trial of good. The trial of good. And the trial of good can be also by the availability of the good that comes from a haram source. A wealth that comes from halal source. An ease and comfort that comes from a halal source. This is a trial, dear brothers and sisters. So, this wealth and this good situation could be a qadr of Allah, a decree from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Somebody inherited a few millions of dollars. This is qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes we are put in a situation where I'm looking for a business. Oh, I find a good shopping center. Oh, everything is good. Location, 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 and I find the right location. And I look at, oh, wow. Numbers. I can make $15,000 net profit. After all expenses, wow, this is 25 percent. 25, you see, percent investment in a yearly basis. Oh, there are two contracts in this shopping center, liquor store, and, and something other than haram store, okay? Here come the test. This is the test. Am I going to to yield to dunya? Am I going to fail the test of the wealth or not? If you say it is only a matter of of you see five years and the contract is going to finish and from that moment on I will inshallah have pure halal business. Okay? I tell him that is fine. If you have another contract with the angel of death, I tell him please wait. If you ha- if you can do a deal with the angel of death, and you have another deal with Allah, 
that you remain on faith throughout all this time, that's fine, do it. But otherwise, what is the most precious thing that we have? It is our deen, our iman. And it cannot be sacrificed for anything, anything, dear brothers and sisters. And unfortunately nowadays, people don't recognize something called principles. They don't. Because people only recognize interests, wealth, profit, that's it. One time I was talking about the situation with some brother. And he told why don't you do this? It's going to be a lot more stuff. I told him, listen, this is my principles. And he started laughing hysterically. Ha, ha, ha. Principles as if people don't have any consideration or don't factor in something called principles of halal and haram and Rasulullah has prophesied that a time will come when people don't care about the source of their income whether it is halal or haram this is in Sahih al-Bukhari so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warn us of uh, and tell us stories about the destruction of the whole people because they failed this this test Allah here tells us about a story from the people who were before us. وَاسْأَلْهُمْ عَنِ الْقَرْيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَاضِرَةَ الْبَحْرِ إِذْ يَعْدُونَ فِي السَّبْتِ إِذْ تَأْتِيهِمْ حِيْتَانُهُمْ يَوْمَ سَبْتِهِمْ شُرَّعًا وَيَوْمَ لَا يَسْبِتُونَ لَا تَأْتِيهِمْ كَذَلِكَ نَبْلُوهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ And ask them about the people who live by the sea, about the time, of the time of, about the town of the people that lives Lived by the sea. Who how its people would violate the Sabbath. They were prohibited to fish, to fish on Saturdays. They can fish in every other day, but not Saturday. This is the trial. You know. You know how difficult it is to fish and the time it takes? It takes a lot of time and patience. Ask me how many times I went for deep sea fishing and came with nothing. So these people, their trial was that during these six days, no fish will show up. But only on Saturday, fish break the surface of the water and just tell, hi, we are here. As a trial, a clear trial for these people. Now, uh, desire to have easy catch, a lot of it, a lot of fish. And it seemed that these people's main source of sustenance was fish. So, it's a lot of temptation. I said, no. But a lot of fish. So they failed the test. And they, on top of disobeying Allah, they, they made some ploys in the deen. They start digging, at, uh, you see, tunnels and trap the fish on Saturday. And then they come on Sunday and say, we are not fishing on Saturday. So this is, this is a, a deception and a, a sin, a double, double the sin. But Allah tells us that Allah destroyed these people and, muted, uh, and made them uh, monkeys and, 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 and pigs. Because of what? Because they fell this test. And this is not unique to that ummah. It is also applicable to our ummah. And there is some similar example for that in our deen. You see, when you are in a state of ihram, you are not allowed to hunt. You are not allowed to go after a game. And uh, why? Because this is a state of worship. You dedicate all yourself for worship during this uh, limited state in the Hajj. It is a state in the Hajj, meaning you could release, be released from this state during the time of Hajj. But during that state of ihram, you are not allowed to hunt. 
والله سبحانه وتعالى سيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يبلونكم الله بشيء من الصيد تناله أيديكم ورماعكم ليعلم الله من يخافه بالغيب فمن اعتدى بعد ذلك فله عذاب أليم Oh you who believe Allah will sure you test you Allah will surely try you This is a trial Trial what? There is easy hunt, game Okay, wealth. This is a form of wealth. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah will surely test you through something of the game that your hands and your spears can reach. You see, do you know how long does it take someone to hunt a deer? Hours. Hey, Allah, Allah will try you by creating certain situation. Where you see the bird or the deer that you wait for hours in order to hunt it, it will be within your hands reach, hands reach, and spears reach. So it's easily attainable form of wealth, but they are prohibited from this. The Sahaba tell us that. When this ayah was revealed, it was revealed uh, during the Umrah of Al Hudaybiyah when they went to Hajj. And in the state of Ihram, they saw of gains, small and big, weak and strong, just at, in their tents. Come to their tent. We are here, you cannot catch us. What, what, this is, Allah said, لا يبلونكم. It is a trial. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ليعلم الله من يخافه بالغيب. That Allah may make evident those who fear him and seen. So, this is a form of a fitna, dear brothers and sisters. And I, as I said in the beginning, the trial of wealth, the trial of ease could be harder than the trial of evil and calamity. We know people who never wavered and remained firm through years in jail, never compromised. But when they went out of there and were tempted with a political position, they were they compromised a lot. This is a failure in the test of wealth, of position, of status. Why could it be harder? Because, yes, the calamity, the, the, the distressful situation is very hard, but you know what? For anybody who has any iman in his heart, this drive them, uh, this drive them to Allah. You know, it drives them to Allah. Many people, and we see this daily basis. People who are in difficult situations, people who are in state of fear, people who are bombarded day in and day out, people who uh, uh, are subject to torture, you find that their heart is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if this is the only thing that they get from this trial, that is good enough and that's worth it. Wallahi worth it. Because nothing important than our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So people go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People start begging Allah, as we saw in the early ayah. People beg Allah, supplicate to Allah. Even pagans. Uh, Allah tells us about pagans who in the middle of the sea, when they are first with faced with a, 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 a horrible st- a storm, and they, they, they are sure that they are to drown, they come back to Allah and dedicate to their worship to one God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The pagans, they dedicate in that situation and Allah accept their dua from them. So the point is, hardships, calamities drive people, sometimes against their will, <laughs> to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is good, good thing. Okay, This is a good thing when people go to Allah. Now when it comes to ease, comfort, status, wealth, okay, you find people tend to lean towards <coughs> comfort, tend to delay any righteous deed, deed tend to 
uh, uh, feel the burden of a sacrifice because they are leaning toward this dunya a lot. They become attracted to the glamour and the glitter of this life. And just somebody, imagine somebody who is sitting on his lazy boy and watching just how many feet nowadays you see like a movie screen kind of uh, uh, screen and and it is time for him to go to to attend the lecture there is something going on or he has several kind you know there are many things nowadays you, you need the full time you see just enjoying whatever entertainment we have it requires full time it's not really fair for people to work anymore Okay, so people tend during the time of comfort is to become heedless and forgetful of Allah and their duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, uh, and also in some cases it drives them to become arrogant and transgress their me- me- limits. And sometimes as we see to forget the source of the bounty, the source of the wealth, that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why, dear brothers and sisters, the warning of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam against failing the test of wealth was more than any other war. One time, Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah radiyallahu anhu came back from al-Bahrain with a lot of wealth. Sahaba knew. Sahaba, they always come to the masjid. It's not only when there is a lecture. They always come to the masjid. But they started waiting until Rasulullah comes out and pass by him. Just hoping that he would call, okay, come, let's, let's divide this, this, uh, this wealth that we have. But when Rasulullah was extremely intelligent when he saw them intercepting him and he said, um, you heard the news that Abu, Abu Ubaidah radiallahu anhu is back. Yes. You heard that he came with uh, what, a lot of bounty and good. They say, yes. He told them, have good news. And inshallah your hope will be fulfilled. But he said, Wallahi mal faqra akhsha He said, by Allah, I don't fa- feel poverty concerning you. I don't feel poverty. I fear the opposite. I fear that the dunya would open up for you. And you start competing with one another to acquire more and more of this dunya. And فَتُلْهِيكُمْ كَمَا أَلْحَتْهُمْ And it will destroy you. He said, I fear that it will be open for you, the dunya be open for you as it was open for those people who were before you and distract you as it distracted them and in one narration فَتُهْلِكَكُمْ كَمَا أَهْلَكَتُمْ and it will destroy you as it destroyed them this is this was the fear of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so you see uh, one need to be careful when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that لِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ فِتْنَةٍ وَفِتْنَةُ أُمَّةِ الْمَالِ For every ummah there is a specific trial. And the specific trial is mal. Dear brothers and sisters, I'm saying this. Why? Because just look at our condition here. Aside from our indigenous brothers, most of us here, for what reason? It is not of the same type of migration of the Sahaba from Mecca to al Medina, right? It's different. We are from uh, regions that, that are struck by, by oppression or by poverty or by famine or by war uh, or by e- economic difficulties and we are coming here seeking what? Opportunity. And you know what? There is a lot of bounties that we are enjoying here. Yes, I know I am in Michigan. 
And I know that Michigan is number one from the bottom of the list in economy. But still, brothers, wallahi, the, the, the security that we enjoy, the freedom that we enjoy, and many bounties that we enjoy, they are all forms of trials that we are going to be questioned about. And we are going to be questioned about how did we utilize these these bounty? Were we grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did we utilize our wealth in order to advance the Islamic cause? Were we active participants in our local masajid? Did we help build a community? Because a community cannot be built by erecting, you see, walls. And this is very necessary. This is a house of Allah. And this is a very special place. But still, this is the physical structure of, uh, of, the, of the masjid. There is a spiritual structure of the masjid. That is the different blocks of the community. That is the members of the community that can come together and build a community and, and have a vision for the future and accommodate generations to come and think for the future and think wallahi ya ikhwan and just just mark these words wallahi your number could quadruple in 10 or 15 years wallahi i'm telling you because i have you know the the um, the, the different communities in united states they have you see different age age different ages I left the community for 10 years. 10 years, only 10 years. And many people come to me. I don't know them. But they are like this young brother, this young brother, young brother, rank one. Said, Sheikh, I memorized the Quran. And I said, I don't know him. <laughs> Why are you are thanking me? He said, You encourage me in the hope. So I came to find the little children became adults and having children. Well, it just multiply, certain multiplication. If we don't have enough institution to accommodate our expansion, wallahi, we are going to be questioned. Why? Because we are coming. Yes, there are a lot of forms of, of, of bounties. But also we are exposing our children to, to other forms of trials, temptation, doubts. That is, that they are bombarded with doubt, doubts day in and day out. And if they are not equipped with the proper knowledge, and they are not equipped with the proper taqwa, they cannot survive. They cannot survive. Wallahi, akhwa. You are a young community, but I'm telling you from the experience of older communities, you may ha we have some young people who came to tell you, I was a Muslim. Why? Because of the, our negligence. Or because of, of our naiveness. Or because of lack of planning. You have to plan for the future. You are in charge. And you have... To have the vision for the future, insha'Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you are to examine the, the time of condition that we have here, and which is more applicable to us, it is more the, the, uh, the, the trial of good. I know some, there are some who are unemployed. I know that. But still, there are, it is not only money. It is the whole environment in which we live. And if we don't remember Allah in prosperity, there is a problem. We may not have the help that we beg for during the time of, of uh, difficulty and, 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 and adversity. So, uh, so therefore, dear brothers and sisters, this is a reminder because I found that uh, many people... Uh, just are very busy engaged and sometimes we have working 
father and working mother. Wow! Working father, working mother. Who is raising the children? What? The TV. And TV, they teach you not only evil, they teach you the... You know, there is a, a, a real evil that exists in the world, and there is imaginary evil that... You see, the children can find ways to make it, you see, to, for this evil to materialize. See, this is, this is a problem. They were raising their peers. And we have a very heavy competition, dear brothers and sisters. They are fighting to win our children. This imam, poor imam, this poor imam compete with Hollywood and all its machine you know it's competition because it is competition to gain the hearts and minds so either our minds and hearts are connected with Quran and Sunnah or connected with what we we watch in, in TV and other other entertainment outlet because there is not now one you have the TV you have the iPad you have iPhone you have iPod you have I don't know what. So, so you have many different media that can take consume all your time while you don't feel, leaving no time for you for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I'll conclude by two contrasting examples. First, of a prophet who was given the riches of the world, who was endowed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala with a mulk with a domain that no one after him can acquire. Sulaiman alayhi salatu was When he saw the power that Allah has given him, when he saw that with the blink of an eye, the throne of a queen that was fa- famous, she was the queen of Sheba, Balqis, before him, what did he say? It's me. It's my superpowers. Did he say that? He said, Hada min f-. This is the first reaction. Hada min fadli rabbi liyabluwani a'ashkuru am akfur. This is only by the grace of Allah so that he may test me whether I would show gratitude or not. Now the other example is the example of Qarim. Harun also enjoyed a lot of wealth. He was so wealthy that the keys to his treasures uh, require a group of people to carry. And they will hardly be able to carry them. His people told him, Do not exalt yourself on earth. Do not be arrogant. Do, Do not puff up. In Allah la yuhibbul farihin. Indeed, Allah does not love the arrogant people. What did he say? Said Qala innama utituhu ala ilmin indi. He said, I've been given this wealth because of a knowledge that is in me. I deserve it. Okay, I have what it takes to, to get all this money. So again, I leave you with a, an appeal to you. To think deeply about what you are doing in your life. Your life is one opportunity you are given. It's not like computer game that, okay, you have one more life. You have another more life. You have eight lives. How many lives do you have? Just one. Oh, what? No, no. How many in the game? You have a lot of lives, right? So it's one life. And this is maybe to build in you the, the, the belief that Oh, there could be another life. No, it's one life, brothers. This is not we. It is one life. If you if you fail, that's it. So, my appeal to you, dear brothers, to think of what you are doing. Think about your priorities. Think about what you can do and you are not doing. And know that Islam can become prosperous if we all 
unite and gather together and serve the cause of Allah and be sincere in striving in the path of Allah. Imam Mahdez, thank you very much for these wise words. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we really thank you very much for taking the time and coming to visit us. Uh, and inshallah, with your help, help Imam Mursi will build the spirituality of this house. We build the structure, Alhamdulillah, but we are, inshallah, we're going to work very hard to, to fill it with spirituality with the help of this you, inshallah. Uh, can we entertain a couple of questions? Sure, inshallah. Uh, inshallah, a couple of questions. From you to Chef uh, Matez. Anybody? You can repeat the question. And the question is yeah. is going to be repeated by the questioner. Yeah. Okay. okay. The question, question is say. Anybody say, I should have the law, that he enter paradise. It means that he will enter paradise. But it could be after a few days that he spent in the hellfire. Now, there are two major points that I would like to make regarding this. That when we plan for our life, we should not plan for spending a period in the hellfire and then go to paradise. Why? Because if we follow the path of sinning, the path of sinning is very slippery and very tricky and could lead us to disbelief that that because of the sin, because you know one of the consequences of a sin as as bigger sin after it until one goes to the path of disbelief. Or one may have a weak and shaky iman. And at the most critical time of his life, when he is in need to die as a Muslim, okay, he will uh, say different words. So there is no guarantee that if we follow this path, that we ever die as just disobedient. Just disobedient. It's very possible that one would... uh, would even go lower than this and become a disbeliever. Okay, number one. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a lesson, lesson from the people of the book. Their stories is for us to, to take lessons and not to fall their trap. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned some people from the people of the book before us by saying, وَقَالُوا لَن تَمَسَّنَ النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَامًا مَعْدُودًا they said that the hellfire will not touch us except for a limited number of days. So let's enjoy ourselves. Do whatever you can. So this is what? This is belittling the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Belittling the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hellfire is not a picnic. It's not a picnic. It's enough to mention one hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that in أَهْوَنَ النَّاسِ عَذَابًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَرَجُلٌ يُوضَعُ فِي أَخْمَصِ قَدَمَيْهِ جَمْرَتَانِ يَغْلِي مِنْهُمَا دِمَاغُ وَهُوَ يَظُنُّ أَنَّهُ أَشَدُّ النَّاسِ عَذَابًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ That's enough. That the lightest punishment in the hellfire is the punishment of a man under the feet of whom two live coal from the fire will be put from which his brain will start boiling. This is the luxury level of the hellfire. The luxury level of the hell. This is the lightest punishment. Now, 
Look at the psychological uh, uh, torment in which he lives. Because he believes, because of the severity of his punishment, that he is the one, he is the one who is re receiving the most intense punishment in the hellfire. So, I don't want to go through this for one second, let alone uh, a limited number of days and a different day, right? It's not like 24 hour day, it's a different day. So, uh, this, you see, we are sinners by nature. <clears throat> but there is a difference between planning for a sin and building a way, life, uh, a way of life on a sin and sinning and repenting immediately. The true believer is the one who sin and repent. Allah described even al-muttaqeen. He, he described him by the muttaqeen and he, described, he attributed sin to them. But he said that they immediately recognized and go back to Allah. Uh, Tawbah is a daily practice of a believer. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi inni la atubu fil yawmi akthara min sab'ina mar. By Allah, I repent to Allah and seek his forgiveness more than 70 days. So this is the two points that I would like to make. The, uh, the answer, la ilaha illallah, that is backed by solid belief in it, meeting its requirements, will save the person, benefit him at one point in his life with difference of opinion of the scholars concerning the Salah. Because some scholars say, if you don't make the Salah, they say, if you don't make the Salah, you are not a Muslim. And Imam Ahmed al one great Imam, I don't subscribe to this position, but the fact that a great Imam like Imam Ahmed Muhammad and Muhammad believe in it is enough warning for us that that be people need to be careful. Allah Ta'ala. <coughs> If you follow all what is required of the Muslims in terms of the prayers, the care, and all the others, would this allow you to get into if you do not do a good deed on this earth, you go to heaven? No good deed but prayers? Yeah. All the five pillars, basically. If you commit yourself to all the five pillars. And no good deeds? This is good, this, this is the main good deeds. Uh, what, what do you mean by good deeds, extra good deeds? You know, working hard and <coughs> providing for your family, providing for your community, helping everybody uh, with this. The five pillars enough to get to uh, uh, Okay. I, I, I think uh, Imam Mautaz uh, referred to this. He said, Man yukhalat al nas wa yasbur ala adhamun khayr min man la yukhalat al nas wa fa. I think the, the, he answered it indirectly, but I think he can add. I'm emphasizing work. Work? Okay. Um, this is a very deep question, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> no, we cannot separate work from the five daily obligations. These five daily, uh, these five pillars of Islam, they are the major, major foundations of Islam and every one of them is a school that is meant to enhance one side of our personality as a Muslim okay so take for example the Salah Salah if we pray properly Salah necessarily drive us to do other things like Allah says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَى عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ Indeed, Salah forbids from lewdness and indecencies and evil. So, uh, so you cannot imagine somebody who just pray. This prayer, if he prays correctly, inwardly and outwardly, this necessarily will drive him to refine his personality and to behave 
in a different way to people. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this like the standard, that the, 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 the criterion to judge the rest of the deeds of the person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ أَوَّلَ مَا يُسْأَلُ عَنْهُ الْعَبْدُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ الصَّلَةِ فَإِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ سَائِرُ عَلَىٰ The first thing that the son of Adam is going to be questioned about on the day of judgment is his prayer. If it is found in order, then the rest of his deed will be in order. So what I'm trying to say that these are the major commands of Allah and every one of them is meant to enhance one aspect of your personality. So the necessary result that one one's personality will refine will be refined to be very active in serving Allah and serving the servants of Allah. <coughs> what do you think from your experience that like I know at a brief point the key concepts to uh, build the spirituality of the community. Clearly you spoke out of experience. So um, we're always looking forward to increasing the spirituality of our community and obviously getting us um, more together. <laughs> what did Rasulullah do when he arrived to al he did two things, not one. He built the masjid and he made the muhajirin and ansar brothers. Working on our brotherhood is extremely important. Respecting and honoring each other is extremely important. There is a connection between our relationship with one another and our relationship with Allah. A simple example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَنَسُوا حَظًّا مِمَّا ذُكِّرُوا فَلَمَّا نَسُوا حَظًّا مِمَّا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ أَغْرَيْنَا بَيْنَهُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَى Once they forgot part of what we commanded them to bear in mind, they neglected the commands of Allah, we instilled in them animosity and hatred. See, connection between our disobedience and our relationship. Because you are talking about spiritual uh, structure that we cannot, it's not, it's from alam ghayy. So there is a part of it that we cannot see. When Allah, when we obey Allah and please Allah sincerely, Allah loves us and make people love us. When hatred and animosity spread in the community, there is a major deficiency and, and, and shortcoming that we are doing and we need to remedy that and, 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 and correct it. So, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا تَفَرَّقَ ثْنَانِ تَحَبَّى فِي اللَّهِ إِلَّا لِذَنْبٍ أَحْدَثَهُ أَحَدُهُمَا that whenever two people who are known for their love and brotherhood to each other separate from one another, it is because of a sin one of them has committed. So, so <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really emphasized on brotherhood. The muhajin and ansar, they, they uh, behave to each other, towards each other as brothers. This is what we need to do and this is a challenge. This is a challenge but at the same time it is an opportunity. The challenge is that we come from different backgrounds, from different cultures, from different ethnicities, from different traditions and sometimes what is good in one, uh, you see according to some is very bad according to some. And this is why we need to Number one, embrace our diversity. Number two, understand that the bond that lasts is the bond that is based on faith. And faith is blind when it comes to ethnicity, nationality, 
color, language, and every other consideration. And therefore, we need also to be blind. Not, this is in the sense that not discriminate, but embrace all our brothers. All our brothers. All our brothers. Be inclusive. Okay? And, and you know, uh, honor and cherish our source of knowledge and our leadership. Source of knowledge is revelation. Our leadership is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is what we all agree upon. Anybody has a problem with the Quran? Raise your hand right now. Nobody. And nobody will raise his hand. We love Allah. We love the Quran. Anybody has a problem with the leadership of Muhammad? Nobody. This is what combines us, dear brothers and sisters. So if we want to raise the red flag of tradition, we have another ethnicity with another red flag for a different tradition. You say, my sheikh, tell you my sheikh. My mazhab, my mazhab. So if you want a, the most chaotic situation in a community, raise these issues. If you want to, uh, to, uh, to talk about superiority of certain ethnicity over the other, this is what destroys our community. So, brotherhood, unity, okay? And unity based on our so sources. Because unity, you can unite people. If you have money, you can people, unite people. Just throw a party and, and tell them it's free. A lot of people will come. So the purpose is not only unity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say just unite. He said, وَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبِّ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا He said, hold fast all of you together to the robe of Allah. Show me the robe of Allah. Do you see any robe hanging from the heaven? Do you see something I don't see? The robe of Allah is the Qur'an. And the Sunnah is inseparable from the Qur'an. Anyone who denies the Sunnah denies the Qur'an. Because the authority of the Sunnah is established in the Qur'an. As simple, as plain, as basic, as direct as this. So this is, uh, uh, you see, brotherhood, vision. We need to have vision. Sometimes people are righteous and good, but they lack the vision. I mean, if you don't consider what is to come in 20 years, 25 years, this is a problem, brothers. We marry, we multiply. And Muslims, mashallah, it seems they have a lot of free time at hand. And this is why they multiply more than others. So we have to factor in this, in our planning in the, for the future. We have to have our institutes. Not only the masjid. Masjid is the focal point of our community. But you need to have a school. You need to have a full-time school. You need to have a, a institute of Quran. You need to have an institute for Arabic language. You need to have a, a just a gem for these, these youngsters. We cannot tell them no, 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 no. And have a policy of no anything they want. No. Cannot no. Okay, you have to provide the alternative for them. There is nothing haram in playing sports. There is nothing haram in competition. There is nothing haram in tournaments. The problem is the environment. And environment. So you need to create that environment. You know, you need to create that environment. So um, activities, activities in the masjid that is designed with knowledge to uh, cater to the different aspects because we need the balanced personality. We need not to create some Muslims or help build some Muslims who will seclude themselves from the community and just, uh, just uh, stay away from the whole society. We need people who are capable of challenging and, uh, you see, and being competitive with, with our time, in our time. So it's very important to find that formula where we don't assimilate with the larger community and lose our values and morals and basic uh, and core uh, 
values and, 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 and our beliefs. But at the same time, we cannot, we cannot um, seclude ourselves completely. And, 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 and we need to find a, a way where we contribute, we leave a good, good impression, we project a good image for the Muslim community to the larger community and at the same time preserve our personality and 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 and, and this can be with creating our environment for our children and generations so so the, they, they they have fun and they they at the same time uh, don't expose themselves to to a fitness that they cannot stand so it's very important that we design good uh, activities uh, to build different we need the balance in, in the personality and uh, and also the basic things you have a beautiful masjid mashallah you have a beautiful masjid but it was not full today was it no it's not full in salat al-jum'ah so we need to reach out to those people who don't come to the masjid we need to attend the congregation of prayer and also invite others this is this build our spirituality and our relationship with each other we need to reach out these people. We should not. We should not have this feeling that we are better because we come to the masjid. Okay, there are a lot of. They have five years contract. Uh, they have five. Others <laughs> has five years contract. 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 Yeah. Okay, they have the five years. That's fine. We we deal with all people who has every contract except a contract on us. You know what the meaning of contract on us? Okay, we deal with all people. All people. The sinners. Anybody. All of us are sinners, brothers. Okay, we should not really uh, show that we are different. We should accept everybody. Sisters wear hijab and sisters who do not wear hijab. Brothers who are committed and not committed yet. Everybody, brothers. Everybody. Because we need to help people come closer to Allah. So the distance could be from here to there. Okay? But if we help them come just one inch forward, this is a good good thing that we do for ourselves and for them. This is very important. Because in the end of life, we could be in the middle of the way and they could be there. They'd be better than us. So, um, our, uh, this is very uh, important. And inshallah, we need to do a lecture about this topic, inshallah. This is very important to our Jazakallah. So, scientists have discovered that the signs for acceptance from Allah, if you do a deed, what's the sign that Allah accepts your deed? <laughs> The Sheikh can repeat. Signs of acceptance from Allah that He accepted your deeds. Is there a sign? Because I mean, when you do something, obviously a lot of factors could be reacted to. So, what's the sign that Allah accepted your deeds? Okay. What does it benefit us to know whether our deed accepted or not? We're going to Jannah. Can we really be sure about that? Okay, so instead, let me describe for you the best condition of the believer when it comes to acceptance of deed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ يُبْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِيلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ سألت عائشة رضي الله عنها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن هذه الآية يا رسول الله هو الذي يصلي ويصوم ويتصدق وهو الذي يزني ويسرق ويشرب الخمر وهو فقال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يا ابن الصديق إنه الذي يصلي ويصوم ويتصدق ويخاف ألا يتقبل منه uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla says in Dayan what means more or less those who give whatever they give with their hearts filled with fear that they are going to return to hell. Give whatever. 
So it's it's not clear what they give. So Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is this I talking about the person who steals, drinks liquor and fornicate and is afraid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, it is the person who prays, who fasts, who gives in charity and fear that it may not be accepted from him. These people are crazy. So the people that Allah loves are people who do their best and always are questioning whether Allah accepted or not. Okay? Not because you see, there are two two different prerequisites for acceptance. The first that you comply with the Sharia. You comply with the way of Rasulullah. Okay? You have to be on the right track. It's not how many steps you take that matter if you are in the wrong direction. First, know your way. So this is the first prerequisite for the acceptance. Like if I am going to, uh, to head north, but my intended destination is Florida, Okay, I'm, I'm sincere in going to Florida. Can I reach to Florida? No. I can't. So first, you wait. Your deed should be in compliance with the Sharia. The second is sincerity. Now, those people whom Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is praising this ayah, were the Sahaba radiAllahu anhu, who were the farthest away from any innovation and most compliant. Uh, compliant with his way. So it is not that they are afraid from, but they are afraid of, you see, the inner component. There is outer component and inner component. The inner component is the tricky one. No one can be sure about the state of his heart. And this is why the the supplication for the firmness of the uh, uh, and, and and the correction for the state of heart is a daily practice. When you say Hidina Salat al Mustaqim, part of it is Hidayah is the Hidayah of the heart and, and the other Hidayah. So you are talking about you see to being firm in the in the in the, uh, in the so you feel not to ex- that accepted because you don't know that you are sincere enough. You don't know whether you humbled yourself Enough before Allah. Can anybody be humble enough for uh, before Allah? Can anybody? No one. You know the angels who are in constant state of worship of Allah on the day of judgment when they first see the mizan, the scale. It is something that is unbelievable. If you are to put the heavens and the earth in the Mizan, it will be able to contain them. The Mizan, we are going to be weighed. I will be in trouble. We are going to be weighed on the day of judgment. Okay? Now, when they saw the Mizan, they say, Subhanak ma'abadnak haqqa ibadatik. Oh, glory be to you, O oh Allah. We did not worship you with the worship that is due to you. If the angels, they admit, because it's part of knowing Allah, to know that no matter how humble you are, no matter how sincere you are, no matter how dedicated you are, you always fall short from fulfilling the right of Allah upon you. From doing what Allah really deserves. Because, you see, any any form of worship that we do is from Allah. From Allah. So it is a, like you cannot... You see, an Imam Shari said a statement. I don't know. I'll speak it. Say it in Arabic. I don't know whether I can translate it. Maybe somebody help me. Alhamdulillah, الذي لا يؤدى 
الحمد لله الذي لا يؤدى شكر نعمة من نعمه إلا بنعمة منه حادثة توجب على مؤدي ماضي نعمه بأدائها نعمة حادثة يجب شكره بها Now I know why it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so, translation. He said, glory be to Allah. All praises are to the Allah. Who thanking him for a bounty is a bounty from him that requires thank. So, how can we thank Allah? How can we thank Allah? So, this is where, you see, because of this inner component. Every deed has outward component and inner component. This is related to the topic of the khutbah, that we need to pay close attention to something that nobody cares about. Nowadays, nowadays, people look for how much, they say, how much this person is worth. They want to bottom line cash. Tell me, half a million, million, two million. Okay, who he is? You see, people look for the physical attributes or wealth or status. And these are the standards of people. But Allah, This is why a believer is always, he, he does his best. But he feels that it may not be accepted from him. I conclude by this. And I'm sorry for uh, a lot of details. One of the Sahab, عنه, he said that the believer combined between Ihsan and fear, that he does his best, he excel in everything that he does for the pleasure of Allah, but at the same time he is afraid of Allah and fear that it not be accepted to him, from him. And he fear, he feel that his sin is like a huge mountain above his head, about to crush him. Whereas Al-Munafiq, he combined between two things, Isa'atan wa amnan, poor performance and feeling secure, mashallah, guaranteed. Okay? So, uh, and he feels that his sin is like a fly that landed on his fa- face and he, he swatted like this and flew away. Not big deal. <coughs> so, uh, the healthy thing about this, why did I ask you the first question? What does it benefit? If somebody said, Alhamdulillah, I'm accepted, Alhamdulillah, I'm now in paradise. Okay? This take him backward. He goes backward. But to always be in constant strive in, in ex- uh, and excelling, uh, this this fear of non acceptance this always drive you to do better and better and better and better. Period. Can I ask one more question? I'm open until fissure. <laughs> it's as much as you guys can. If you, if you are faced with the challenges and difficulties in your life, should you consider that as a test or a punishment? Allah, this is a very beautiful question. So we have 15 minutes. <laughs> there is a theoretical, theoretical answer and practical answer. Theoretical, technical answer. If one is good and genuine and righteous outwardly and inwardly, this difficulty is... Um, is uh, just raising him in ranks. Okay, it is of the same trial of the Prophet and Sadiqi. But this is the technical part <coughs> because it's not applicable to me and you and people who err all the time. So, exactly same as the answer for this question. The best way to think about this or to approach this issue is to always suspect you because you are between two choices. To either suspect Allah or suspect yourself. So either 
so what do you do the suspect who is worthy of suspect uh, suspicious Sus- who, who is worthy of? it's us so you suspect yourself and any kind of difficulty is an invitation for every one of us to dig deep in our soul and try to find folds and flaws you see and if we don't assume that it is a punishment we are not going to go through this scrutiny to ourselves so this helps us scrutiny ourselves so the, the point regardless of what it is we should always suspect ourselves we should always go back to ourselves because again there is no limit to perfection in Islam there is no limit why? because the one whom you are worshipping is limitless in his perfection so no matter how high you elevate in dealing with him there is always a higher level even the best man ever Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam who is number one in number one in the whole world and the chief of all the prophets and the messenger of Allah on the day of judgment Allah will teach him of certain praises of him and grant him certain extra knowledge about him and 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 he uh, for praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pray with praises that he never knew before why because Allah this is the angels this is subhanahu glory be to you we did not worship you with the worship that is due to you